to Boccanini's String Quartet Number no. 2, Opus 58, played by the Talish Quartet. I'm live now. It's Thursday. It's 8.31 and it's time for Howard Elias. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay, it's Thursday so, already. My God, the week goes so fast. Mm -hmm, doesn't it? Yeah. Time flies by when you're having fun. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the glass castle. Yeah, so the big film opening today is Justice League. <laughs> but I'm not seeing it until tonight, so I'll review it next week. And it actually works out well, because another film about another superhero is opening next week, Professor Marston and the Wonder Women, which is not a Mar... A, a, a Mar no, she's DC. I don't can never remember the difference. Which universe she belongs in. <laughs> she's DC. So it's she's actually... It's it's about the, the origin story of, of Wonder Woman. So I'm going to do both of those next week, and today we're doing The Glass Castle, which is a book I read. It was... Um, it came out... The book came out in 2005, and it was a huge bestseller. It was on the New York Times bestseller list for just over five years. Someone's memoir. Someone's memoir. And um, if you think you had a lousy childhood, you need to read this book. <laughs> or if you think your parents were lousy parents, you need to read this book because well, I think I don't know she the wins the Watching award. The trailer, I don't know if they actually were such lousy parents. Well, you know, this From is very. The trailer, yeah, it, this is very interesting because you wonder, as I read the book, um, at least the first half of the book, it is very light because her parents are a bit Looney Tunes, um, and I'll get into that in a bit. But she seems to, she's very forgiving of her father, especially, more so than I would have been. So she's, she's, she's clearly a much nicer person than I am. So, um, you know, if, if you, if you... So they didn't raise her badly. <laughs> Maybe not, but I think if you were to ask one of her brother, or her brother, or one of her sisters, certainly the youngest sister, I think she would have a different view. And it's very interesting that you know I remember sitting once with uh, I have two older brothers, so I was sitting once with my with the middle brother. I'm the youngest, and we were recounting or recollecting our childhood, and his memories are completely different than mine. You know, he he remembers things that I don't remember, or he has certain impressions or, or things that affected him that didn't affect me and vice versa. So I think, uh, you know, you're going to get different opinions from different children. You're nodding your head up and down. So maybe you have the same experience. Yeah, no brothers or sisters. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there's nobody to corroborate what happened. No. <laughs> well, so in very, it's very interesting. In many countries, if you want to get married, you need to get a license first. And if you want to open up a business, you need a license. Uh, you want to build a house? License. Drive a car? You need a license. But to have children... You don't need a license, and and certainly, my opinion is after watching Rex and and Rosemary we uh, Walls, they should have had a license before they <laughs> were allowed to procreate, because they were not, in my opinion, they were not fit to be parents. Okay, let's go into the nitty gritty of the story. Okay, now Rex, um, who's since passed away, so no great spoiler here. Uh, Rex is a dreamer. He's a mechanic of sorts. He's never short of big ideas. He has an idea to produce uh, clean coal. Um, you know, he's got these great ideas. He's got he he invents this little contraption for people who like to pan for gold. It's going to sort out the 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 dirt from the gold much easier than let's say a pan would. You know, he's got lots of big ideas. He has this idea to build a glass house basically a sol uh, so with solar panels on the roof and glass all the way around heated from the sun and he's he's got them all done on in drawing you know, he's got drawings done he's you know i don't know whether he was a qualified engineer but he certainly had the talent to be an engineer the capability um but unfortunately he's never able to bring these these ideas to fruition and he has a humongous drinking problem that only seems to get worse as as the t as time goes on. Now, Rosemary, the wife, she's oh, <laughs> she, she's not much different, but I would call her a free spirit. Um, she's trained as a science teacher. Now, I know this from the, reading the book. It's not in the movie. So, uh, if, you know, if you watch the movie, there's nothing that says that she's a science teacher, but in the book she is. Um, but she pref prefers to spend her days painting nature scenes. And she she does this at the expense of 
leaving her own cook, kids to cook their own meals at their own peril. So at a very, very, very young age, her kids are playing with fire, literally. <laughs> that they're, they're cooking on the stove and, and cooking their own meals because she said, look, uh, you know, a meal, you eat it and, it's, and you're done in 30 minutes, a painting lasts forever. So which do you think I should spend my time on? This is what she says to the kids. <laughs> Right? <laughs> An interesting argument. Yeah. Now Go she ahead, she up fast. Right, exactly. She also has dreams, but hers are of opening an art gallery where people would come and spend fall, small fortunes on her films, on her films, on her on her art. Uh, but the reality is, she's not a very good artist, and nobody's banging down her door to buy her work. So these pieces of art just collect, you know. <laughs> All over the all over the house or wherever they're living from time to time. Now, because neither of them has any desire to settle down or earn a regular paycheck, in the again in the book they do get jobs from time to time, but neither of them can hold the job for any length of time because they have no desire to hold the job, and they're constantly running from bill collectors. So at the drop of the hat of a hat, they're packing up the kids and throwing them into their jalopy of a car. And moving on to some next place further and further off the grid. So, you know, you said you saw the trailer. You see that they're living basically in the desert of, of Arizona or wherever. I think it was Arizona or New Mexico or something like that. And the parents are quite good at making everything seem like an adventure for the kids. You know, they, the kids are loving this. When they're very young, they're loving it. But as they're getting older and they're moving further and further off the grid they're starting to realize, the kids are starting to realize, hey, this is not normal, and this is not healthy. And for... what about their schooling? Yeah, well, the mother had said, you don't need to go to school, just read books. So they would buy their kids books. They were avid readers, these kids. They were self-taught. Now, in the, in the book, they do, eventually, they do go to school, barely. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, generally, they were really, they were self-taught, these kids. And um, it, uh, you know, as, as I said, as the kids start to realize that this is not normal, they, they, um, they don't, they don't, there's nothing they can really do about it because they're far too young, you know, in, 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 in the beginning, they're far too young to do anything about it. But they, but they realize that, you know, there's days that go by where they're not eating or there's one scene in the movie and, and in the book where they're eating butter. This is, they're eating butter and sugar this is because that's all there is in the house to eat in in the house in the shack to eat and um their father would disappear for days on end and he'd come back eventually and he'd be drunk as a skunk and he'd say okay kids time to pack up and what he's what he'd call do the skedaddle and pack up and everybody jumps into the car and off they go and whatever doesn't fit into the car gets left behind or gets thrown out the window and in the book especially it, it talks about one time their cat didn't fit and they tossed the cat out the window, and that was the end of that. So, <laughs> very strange. So, as I said, in the book, the first half of the movie is like, ha, ah, isn't this interesting, huh? But after a while, you see that this pattern of, of neglect and and abuse? Is it abuse? I suppose it is. You know, I, quite disturbing. Yeah, is, 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 not, is not good. So, as I, so, so that's, that's what the film is about. And as the film goes on, they get older, the kids, the kids get older, they see the parents are not changing, the father in fact is getting worse because his, his drinking is getting worse, and they start planning, secretly planning their own orderly skedaddle, where each one is going to get out of the house you know, in time and save up money to take the next one out, to take the next one, the next one, the next one. Now the story begins, both the story and the book, they begin in, in flat, it begins in the, in the present day, in the present by meaning 1989, where the, uh, the, the second child, who's the, uh, her name is Jeanette Wells, Walls, Jeanette Walls, she's, uh, she's now a New York based gossip columnist. This is all true. She's a New York based gossip columnist. She is, played by Brie Larson, the Oscar winner from um, Room, whom I absolutely love. And you see her, she's, she's got her hair done up, and she's, you know, she's got uh, you know, immaculate makeup, immaculate clothing. She's in the movie, she's engaged to a uh, finance guy, 
Um, How did she manage to achieve all of this? Right. So this is this is a this is a weakness in the movie because the connection's not there. You see her going off to university. She gets a scholarship to go to university, and and then and then there's there's nothing between that point and the the present time. Well, I mean, at least she went to university. Yeah. My problem with is is how if they weren't even schooled, how she gets a scholarship to go to university. Where where how, where's that leap? Yeah. So what happens is she gets a job. Eventually, the the family moves to Rex's hometown in West Virginia called Welch. And in fact, as we were talking off air, the the movie is filmed in Welch. So. Um, who knows? Maybe they filmed in his real house if it still exists. I don't know, but it was filmed and certainly it was certainly filmed in this in the town where where they lived, and she at that point they're going to school, sort of, and she shows talent writing. So she gets a job on the school paper, and she moves her you know she moves up in the in the school paper hierarchy, becomes the editor. I think by the time I think by the second year of high school or something, she's the editor. So she's very talented at writing. She's you know these are smart kids, amazingly because I think the parents are actually smart parents, but they're just not disciplined. And of course, you mentioned earlier they grew up reading tons and tons of books. Right. Mm -hmm. So she gets so she she gets a job on the school paper. Then she gets she gets the scholarship to go to I want to say Brown. I can't remember which university it was, but it was a good university she went to and was writing for the university. And then she ended up, you know, getting a yeah, job. If she went to Brown, she would, yeah, be able to land a job. Yeah, she, she got a good job. Yeah. But how she, how she, you know, she meets this, this finance guy and lives on Park Avenue and, you know, she's rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous. She's on MSNBC, you know, the, the real, the real Jeanette Walls is on television. And you know, so she does really, really well. But you see her. This is Brie Larson when she's Brie Larson. She's you know, she's her hair is immaculate. She's wearing pearls, strands of pearls. She's got these really tight dresses on, very much you know, late eighties with the big shoulder pads. Um, but you don't see the connection. Where did where did she change? You know, because as a kid, she's very much this. She's 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 very as I said, she's very forgiving of her father, and she's very. Um, She's accepting of his behavior to a point, but she knows that it's not healthy. And she's and she's the, of all the kids, she's I'd say she's the most accepting of the parents' craziness. But then somehow, when she gets to New York, that all changes, and she just shuts down. And the film begins, and the book begins, where she's in a taxi in New York, and she sees her mother scavenging for garbage on the side of the road in New York City. The parents followed her and her sister to New York and were living on the streets. And that and so she sees her her mother out there and then she makes contact with them again mm -hmm. as an adult. She she had cut off cut herself off from there. Mm -hmm. So it's an amazing story. I got to say an amazing story. Um, but in and the, she was the one who got the other children out. Of no, that so situation, the or what happened? No, so the eldest sister. So she's the second. She's the second child. So the eldest sister left first, saved up enough money, and this is dealt with more in the book than it is in the movie. So she saved enough money, and the two of them saved money together. So then, then she left, went to university. Then they they saved up enough money to get the brother out, and then you know he started working. He's a he's a policeman somewhere in New York, somewhere. In, in the northeast of the United States, and unfortunately, the youngest one had to live with the parents by herself, and she really got screwed up mm. in the head. And in the, as I, in the book, also it deals a lot with her uh, stability, you know, emotional stability, than the movie does. In the movie, it doesn't even deal with it, but in the book, it deals with it that she really got screwed up by the parents, and and eventually they were able to get her out as well. Um, so I think today they're all, well, the father has now passed away, but I think today they're all one big happy family. In fact, she lives with the mother. So, so, okay. So, so, so that's why I say she's a... We're very forgiving. Yeah, very she's forgiving. a very forgiving person. She's and a much nicer person than I am. played by Naomi Watts. I hardly recognized her, the makeup, making her look so old and craggy at points. Yeah, well, wow. they, you know, they have to... <laughs> Excellent makeup. Yeah, they have to follow about a, I guess, about a 25-year time span. So you have three actresses 
playing Jeanette. You have the little one who's about six years old. I don't know who she is. The 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 next one is the the, the preteen Jeanette. She is played by a, a young actress by the name of Emma Anderson. I've never seen her before. She really is the star of the film. She is absolutely fabulous, and it's worth seeing the film just for her. She really does a great job. And um, and then as the as the adult Jeanette, it's Brie Larson. So you, you Brie Larson actually, you know, she's billed as the star, but she's not the star of the film. It's really this um, uh, Ella Anderson is the star. The parents, Naomi Watts is the is the mother, and Woody Harrelson from Cheers fame is the father, and he also is very good. But he's he's pretty much playing a character that's not too far away from himself. You know, he's well, I don't, I don't, you know. <laughs> Did you know Woody Harrelson's father was was in jail? I think he died in jail. He was in, he murdered some people. Nope. Yeah, it's like it's quite a. He, yeah. Apparently, Woody Harrelson's father was quite the character. Um, so I'm sure he uh, drew upon personal experience to to portray um, Rex in this film. So the parents have to, in terms of makeup, they have to do about a 25 year span, which I suppose you know. Well, I guess you know from about. 30 to 55 is no great acting stretch, I guess, or makeup stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, certainly with Naomi Watts, they, they give her, you know, scraggly hair and lots of wrinkles. Lots of wrinkles. But, you know, she, she's okay. I don't think she's great, but I think for me, the, it was the little girl and Woody Harrelson were the best in, in the film. Mm -hmm. So as far as the film goes, I like the, I liked the book better, but I didn't even like the book. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I think I like the first half of the book and I like the first half of the film when the kids are really young because it seems like it's an adventure. And then you and then as you get into it, you realize how toxic this environment is. And to me, that was a real turnoff. Yeah, so, very yeah, very depressing. So yeah, and, and to me, the problem with this film was that it I didn't it doesn't really let you it can't it doesn't really decide what kind of film this is. Is this a modern day tragedy or is it a, uh, a, a one of triumph of the spirit? It, it, and if you ask the real Jeanette Wells what, it, Wells what is it, it's a triumph of the spirit story. But in the film you don't know which one it is. And, and I had a problem with that. And, and to me, so I think, you know, whenever you're adapting a book into a movie, of course you can't do it all. Otherwise you're going to have a six hour movie you have to you have to chop and i think they just chopped too much out so that as, as you were asking me how did she become this person who wears pearls and padded shoulders we don't see that link and because we don't see that link we don't build up this relationship with the with the adult Jeanette you don't feel for her and and when you see her really forgiving her father when the father's on in the hospital dying and she's forgiving him you don't you don't buy into it at least I didn't buy into it because I thought this guy is a horrible person why are you forgiving him but for whatever reason the real Jeanette did forgive her father I don't you know, I, this is, I don't get it but. okay so, so I don't know I, you know I'm, I'm ambivalent about the film it's got good performances so that was strong I, I like that but the story just didn't do it for me so I'm really on the fence with this one um, it's not a film that I'd say run out and go see, but if you happen to see it, okay, you know, if, if you have parental issues, God knows I have parental issues, <laughs> you might want to see it, um, but uh, I'm still a Brie Larson fan, I'm still a Woody Harrelson fan. Might want to see it. <laughs> you might want to see it, so, you know, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm indifferent to the film. Okay, so The Glass Castle. Glass Castle. Maybe read the book instead. Read the book instead, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Howard Elias. All right, see ya. Thank you.